Well, for more on what's happening on the markets, let's bring in Mike Vinoker, Portfolio Manager and Wealth Advisor at MV Wealth Partners at IA Private Wealth. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So a lot going on tomorrow in particular, not necessarily a lot of action out there today. Um, but when it comes to the Bank of Canada in particular, um, how do you think markets are sort of pricing in what the Bank of Canada I is going to do next? I think markets are resigned to the fact that they're going to raise a quarter of a point. Um, we think that they have to maintain credibility. They've pretty much said so. They've been data dependent. The data has been strong. Unemployment rate has been low. We just had a jobs report, uh, I believe, in the last couple of days. It was very strong in Canada. Yeah. GDP numbers have been good. Um, so we think that from a credibility perspective and from a uh, messaging perspective, we wouldn't be surprised by them taking that opportunity to raise a quarter point and then maybe pausing like the Fed did previously and seeing what transpires within the data sets. And then we're looking at this U.S. inflation data that will be out tomorrow too and then wondering what is the Fed going to do after that. Um, with, with these central banks, uh, you know, uh, really zeroing, zeroing in on inflation, I know they have been for the, the past year or so anyway, but um, you know, concerned about the uh, inflation being persistent and not wanting to, you know, let it, you know, get stuck where it is. Um, what sort of, you know, repercussions should investors be thinking about if these central banks, you know, have to keep on moving forward with more rate cuts or rate hikes, rather, if the Bank of Canada raises and maybe the Fed follows as well later this month? Right. Um I'm going to give you a two-part answer. Yeah, go for it. Uh, first of all, cash is no longer trash. So I think investors have now switched their motto from the last 10 or 15 years of Tina, there is no alternative, to, wow, cash actually pays something. So yeah. if I'm, if as an investor, if I'm going to move my money out of cash and into something else, be it corporate bonds, be it equities, uh, I better have my margin of safety. I better have value for my dollar, number one. Number two, in terms of what the central bankers do, I think the data has really proved to us over the last year that they're moving the needle at the short end of the curve. But financing really doesn't take place for the most part at the short end of the curve. It really takes place in the belly, the middle part of the curve, the five-year, the 10-year rates. Yeah. And those rates are a lot lower than the shorter term rates. So the actual cost of borrowing is not what people are seeing when they look at the short-term rates. And corporate America, corporate Canada has proven to be pretty amazing and ingenious when it comes to cutting costs, figuring out productivity, efficiency, AI now. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure that a higher rate necessarily means doom and gloom. It just means know the value, know the margin of safety, and understand what you're value proposition is between cash and putting your money elsewhere. Yeah, when you talk about, um, you know, finding efficiencies, that seems to be one of the, the driving forces behind the run up in tech, uh, you know, so far this year. I mean, there's a lot of talk about AI, but when you rewind a little bit further, these companies were, were cutting jobs, were trying to find ways to, to save money. Do you think that really that is, is what's been behind the uh, you know, enthusiasm for tech? Or, do, or can you put a lot of it on, on AI as well? Nobody knows for sure. Yeah. Sentiments run wild. You know, fear and greed, those two sentiments between the bulls and the bears. People catch a narrative and mm -hmm. then there's a bunch of FOMO and then you catch a narrative of, oh my God, it's different this time because AI is going to do this and that and the other. We saw that in 1999. We saw it with the marijuana stocks. We saw it with the cryptocurrency stocks. Maybe now we're seeing it with the AI narrative. Um, I'm not exactly sure necessarily what's really driving this other than the sentiment at this point because the use cases have not necessarily been proven in terms of how AI is going to be used, how profitable these companies are going to be, and who the winners and losers are going to be at the end of the day. I'm curious too, when you're thinking about the, the consumer right now, we were just mentioning Aritzia reporting its latest results, but Amazon is also a big focus today because it's, it's Amazon Prime, Prime Day. Yeah. And trying to get a sense of, I mean, I don't know how much you can take away even from Amazon Prime Day results uh, in terms of people, you know, 
trying to find a deal? Is that a sign that they want just deals right now or that they're, you know, feeling uh, confident to spend? What do you think we should be taking away from, you know, whether it's, you know, the results from this one day in particular or, or retailers like, like Aritzia? Um, so I think the general landscape in terms of retail has been a little bit less um, exciting. Uh, you've seen a lot of consumers spend more on experiences versus things. We came out of a two-year period where we were all locked up in our homes and we were buying things. And now look at travel bookings, look at airfare prices, hotels. I mean, you, you cannot go anywhere. Everything is booked. Restaurants are booming. People are going out. People are having fun. And But if you look at Walmart or Target or some of these other retailers, perhaps Aritzia, maybe they're finding that there's a bit of a downshift. Maybe their inventories have come up. They're having other issues. Yeah. When, when we're thinking about what people are doing these days, too, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, social media as well and threads because that's been such a, sure. a popular topic the past couple of days, not necessarily something that they're spending money on right now. Um, maybe that's, you know, in, in Mark Zuckerberg's uh, plans long term. Who knows? Probably. Um, but, but what are you thinking when it comes to Meta dabbling in this, uh, you know, new app? Well, my understanding is that Elon Musk and Mark have been sort of having a sparring war. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's a war of words, and apparently I think there's some kind of a sparring match uh, that will that will happen at some maybe. point. Maybe, yes. Um, <laughs> perhaps this is Meta's way, uh, metaphorically speaking, of yep. combating Twitter uh, in their own right using technology. Perhaps this was always Mr. Zuckerberg's plan. I don't know. Um, I think that the fact that Meta was able to sign up all of these people in a very short period of time is impressive. What we don't know is what kind of revenue is this going to generate, how much profitability, how much does this really add to the stable of properties that Meta owns? Yeah, it, which is really interesting. I mean, 100 million or more, I guess, at this point in terms of, of signups. But he had his uh, sort of thumb on that 1 billion mark before he's worried about monetization, which could still be a, a ways away. I don't know if they'll sort of go at this pace until then, but... Yeah, we'll see. you know, Meta's been amazing at um, building up WhatsApp, Instagram, uh, Facebook, yeah. all of these different properties. And I think, to your point, he will get to a billion. The question is... How much revenue are those eyeballs going to bring yeah. and what does that mean for the business?